What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Good show today. We're going to react to the basketball game that we just saw and talk a little bit about what are the biggest transfer portal needs for the Badgers. We talk quarterback a lot, but there's a lot of positions out there that could use a little bit of what I would call uh, fortification going into next year. We're going to talk about that, the basketball game, take some comments, and maybe even talk about a couple players that are going to be enhanced by Luke Fickle and his staff. All that and more today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I am your host, Ryan Herrings. Really, truly do appreciate everybody tuning in, everybody watching live, everybody that's going to watch this later. If you're listening on the on the podcast, heading into work, wherever it is, um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, let's get into it. We're going to bring uh, Justin on the show. We got a lot to talk about today, and there's going to be no shortage of, of news cycle issues coming up. But we're going to start here with transfer portal. Transfer portal needs. Now we've talked about quarterbacks a lot, Justin. We can obvi- we can we almost don't even think about that. We know that's a need. Mm-hmm. What are some other spots? The Badgers need to, in your opinion, fortify here in the transfer portal, or at least look at it. Yeah, I think we would both feel far more comfortable if they found somebody on the a defensive line, another guy as, if nothing more than a stopgap, somebody who has played extensive reps at the the nose guard position. You know, I I would like some a big body that we could throw in there because I think Paz has some things that he can do. And I think that Neil will probably Curtis Neil will probably get out there and show some things, but they're both neither one of them has played a ton of reps. Well, and if you can get somebody, gone, right? I'm sorry, I, I think Geo's gone right after this Is year. It? Yeah, after so. this year, yes. Yeah. So, but Neil, but even, here's the thing though. I'm just cut you because that's that's number one on my list too. It is nose tackle because um, Keanu Benton. Let's be honest, is leaving a four year, three hundred twenty pound hole in the mm-hmm. middle of that defensive line. And Curtis Neal is a different type of dude. Because I had yeah. someone else tell me. He, he's more yeah. squat. He's he's going to be a guy who is probably going to be closer to about 300, maybe a mm-hmm. little over. He's not going to get to 320 unless it's yeah. bad weight. He just doesn't have the frame for it. But he's, he's going to be more explosive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's a different type of player. Like, he's probably going to be more disruptive. Hold on, I'm gonna pause one second. I'm gonna take Justin off for one second. All right, I'm back. I don't know what just happened. Music just started playing. I think it was off one of my tabs. I think that was my fault. So if anybody heard that, <laughs> on me. That's the dangers of going live. Yeah. Um, I don't hear anything. Ryan's else. streaming the 49ers football game. <laughs> by the way, by the way, everybody in the chat, I'm pausing the Niners game. Scott always ruins it for me somehow. I'm warning everybody: don't spoil the Niners game if. You're Okay, it happened again. I don't. Do you hear that, Justin? That audio? It, your audio is getting weird during that time. Like it's you're getting quieter, and okay. It's well, like I think we're. Digit- I don't hear digitization. It Listen, I do apologize for everybody listening. I I apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm sure it's my fault. Um, but let's go back to defensive tackle. So, both uh, Jim Leonard played a a three four. You know, Fickle's going to play some combination of odd front. I think he he's going to play a three three five. Is a little overblown, but yeah. he's. Either way, you it will need probably a- be closer to a three four. I could see some sub packages where you do three three five with like Wooler out there as one mm-hmm. of your extra safeties. But yeah, I way, it's not going to be fun stuffing guy. Yeah, yeah, and that's not going to be Curtis Neal. So I think they got to find that in the portal. But let me take defensive line one step further. I also think they need to try to find a pass rushing defensive end. I don't disagree with that either. I think they could use a big body with some a little bit of athleticism and juice. I don't think we've really had that. I think the guy who ideally would be a perfect fit for that would be Wit if he could get healthy and maybe pack on 20 pounds. I mean, I'm, I'm all for him playing it at outside linebacker, but I also think that he's got the frame to take it to 280 and play it in you know Wisconsin's defense too. Um, we don't have a guy that's really got that leverage and explosiveness off the edge at all. Um, and I think that would be a big, big help for this defense. I do think that that's going to be a major area where we'll see upgrading with with uh, 
fickle is that I think they're better at finding those athletic frames and building them. So I think that that's something I really look forward to. But yeah, they definitely have to find some guys and they're out there. You may have to go to like, there could be a difference maker at a Mac school that just as a guy who is a late bloomer, who's developed and has some burst that is looking for an opportunity at a higher level program. Now those guys are out there, you know? Yeah. I, mean, so I think there's... you look at the, the defensive end rotation, right. And it's chock full of guys that are run stuffers more like yeah. James Thompson, Rodas there's John, tree stumps. Yep. They're guys that I think they hold up fine at first and second down, but I think they've been in the program long enough now to, for us to now at least say yeah. they're not going to be that pass rushing dude. Yeah. And yep. frankly, Townsend, the guy that came over from Oregon, we haven't heard much there either. What about – so we talked defensive end. What about a running back? That's another position. I, that's yeah, back. I think they definitely need it. And I actually think it needs to be somebody who can get out on the, out, out on the field. Um, Allen will be very interesting this year because I don't think he's a perfect fit for this offense. I think they want somebody who is a little bit more sudden and disrupt. They're like a guy who can really move and knife kind of knife through the defense rather than a guy who's kind of going to go downhill. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we run traditional more like an air raid, we're going to have larger gaps and it's going to be looking for a guy who's going to kind of search and sift through the traffic rather than being a guy who's going to be like Braylon Allen, where you're going to keep tight gaps and run, you know, downhill. So um, I think they need somebody, yeah, who's who's a little bit more sudden, a little bit more of that scat back type guy who can get out there, catch some passes. And I don't think either one of the two guys that we have are bad. I just think you could use somebody in there who's a little bit of a change up to those two. Like Isaac Garendo, he would be he would be fun in this offense. Um, I actually think they could use somebody with not with necessarily his top end speed, but somebody who's a little bit more like a James White type guy. Sure. I would say this too. It's not just the type of players we have. It's the fact that Braylon Allen has a extensive history and through two yeah. years getting banged up. Both Chesimo, of them do. He has a yeah. extensive history of having real big injuries. So, mm -hmm. and then between the two of them behind that, what do you have that you're comfortable with? Julius Davis has been able to get on the field. Yeah. You have, you know, uh, Nate White is coming in, but he's going to be a true freshman. Yeah. And he's got to build up his body. So there is not a lot there to really – there's nobody there that you can say, this dude we feel comfortable is going to be the dependable mm -hmm. for the entire year, right? So I think running back's an issue. Um, give me one more if you have one more off the top of your head that you think would make sense here. Um, I actually think, you know, Rajiv had said some, mentioned something to us about this, but I actually think outside linebacker mm, could use somebody who's got – who's shown something because we don't really have anybody. Herbig's gone. We don't have anybody that I look at and say, that I can count on that guy to get me five sacks this year. Like they could happen with some one of these guys, but they haven't shown us anything that has that kind of burst and that ability to win one-on-one -on -one off the edge. And I would love to find somebody who has some, you know, is ready to go and can do that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's weird how, how much changes in a year, right? A year ago, we were so excited about the young depth, depth at outside linebacker, mm -hmm. right? You have all these guys and we were worried about the depth at safety. And now I feel like I, I love the depth at safety and I'm terrified at outside linebacker. Uh, David Wagner pops in and says, man, James White would be perfect. Yeah. To be fair, James White would be perfect on just about any offense. You <laughs> like that's, But, yeah, that scat back is definitely something that this offense would use. Well, let me give you one more that I'm – they got to find a punter. Yeah. And maybe it's Gavin Myers who's on the roster who's a walk-on. But Vucevic is gone. And if you remember, that was a D3 transfer. Came in and has been a, just a rock-solid punter for two years. Well, that's what I was going to say. We have no idea what's behind him because we haven't needed anybody. He's been really good. Mm -hmm. So we could have, you know, the guy behind him, Gavin Meyer, could be good. We don't know. We, he we he don't could know. be, you know, borderline almost as good as the guy we had. We'll find out. Um, and they'll find they'll, out. If they don't yeah. target the punter. Then, then we that, know they're comfortable. Yeah. yeah, then they're comfortable. Here's one more for you. I'm going to finish on this one. What about cornerback for you? I actually, this was something that I was considering. Um, I actually thought that I think they're getting a lot of good young bodies that are moldable in there, but I don't know. If we're very light on reps. Um, I, you're going to have Alex Smith back this next year, which is a big deal. And I think that you feel good about a couple of the other guys like Hallman, um, who was had his ups and downs, but I think with another year under his belt and another spring, will probably be a guy who's ready to contribute. Uh -huh. what level he'll be at at that point. You know, was he going to be an average starter? Is he going to be a guy who's really good? We don't know. 
But I think they could also look, I think Fickle is a type of guy who could potentially bring in a difference maker type player there. Like, I think this is what happens when you, this is why you go get the, the top level head coach. Guys want to come play for him. There's a chance there that you can go pull guys that you normally wouldn't have access to in terms of getting for the transfer transfer portal. We're seeing it on the offensive side already. Mm-hmm. We have quarterbacks coming on campus that never would have considered Wisconsin prior to this. So this is what you're doing it for, and that's what the that's why you have to go after those guys. Well, you know, it could be too. Like DeCluna is a is a really solid, interesting. You know, maybe he mm-hmm. can play early. Avion Jones, I like. A Corey Lide is there. Uh, maybe Al Ashford is a guy that we talked about potentially yeah. going over. I, here's what I don't want. I don't want this year's approach where you bring in three guys and none of the younger players develop. But Oh, yeah, that's 100% I agree with. One that. guy might make a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Like one dude to help solidify it. Alexander Smith's on the other side. Maybe that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's a good right. season, too, to break in, guys. Because mm-hmm. we're Agreed. not going to face anybody I don't think that's going to have like this over-the-top offense that we're going to be like, it's yeah, just we can't put these state. guys out there. Yeah. I mean that's it though. It's it's Ohio State, yeah. Washington State. We'll see what's what what's there. They might bring another transfer quarterback, but it's really Ohio State. Yeah. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about the basketball game. A slow start, a big finish. I don't know. What do you take out of that? We're going to get into that and why I think it's not that big of a deal. But there is one wart on this team that I think is glaringly obvious um, that I'm I want to talk about. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. Great place for live bets. Um, Great place for futures bets. If you have a feel on a team, let it rip. $5, $10, whatever it is, have fun with it. It's a great way to kind of enhance your sports um, weekends and what you're watching and add a little more excitement. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's something that we do on Locked On, and they have you covered from every sport, every angle, podcasts, news, live bets, in-game betting. Um, It's the easiest format to use on the web. That's why we go there. Grab your mobile device, head to the website today, learn more about the trends and actions, bet online where the game starts. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. Um, just remember, we have a big giveaway show coming up. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and you can join in on that fun. It's a bunch of free stuff we're giving away just as a thank you for supporting the show. So really appreciate all of that. Um, we appreciate you coming in, checking us out every day, your team every single day. Uh, let's get back into this. If you guys can't tell, I'm fighting a cold. So my voice is a little gravelly, uh, but listen, like Leo Chanel, I don't miss reps. I'm, I'm going to be here every down of this thing. So we're going to keep it going. I think he actually did miss some reps at the beginning of the year <laughs> last year. So maybe that's a bad example. Jonathan Taylor, we'll go with that one. Um, let's talk about the basketball game. So Wisconsin, Lehigh, very slow start, um, big finish. What's your What's your big takeaway here? I think that we had a team that did not come in locked in mentally, and it showed. We were slop, super sloppy to start the game. Uh, we were not necessarily locked in mentally on our, our defensive side of the ball where we were, you know, guys rotating and stuff like that. And they just came downhill on the drive a lot with no help. You know, Davis took a couple risks on plays where we, he just absolutely got torched by a guy on one of them. And it's like you have to be more locked in. This is This is the type of thing that in a Big Ten game, and it's hard to look at it this way because in a Big Ten game, they're probably locked in, right? They're not taking a Big Ten team lightly like this. Um, they should not be doing it with this, though, either. Like, these are the games where they have an opportunity to just put a team away early and get reps to the backups because they have to build out that bench. And they need these guys to get some reps and prove something on there. Um, and we saw some good McGee, you know, run tonight. He, he showed some things. He, he, you know, he is a little. We need to see him put the ball in the basket a few times. But I think he was out there. He was he was okay at point. I mean, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything where you looked at him and you're like, "What are you doing out there?" Um. But yeah, I I think that a lot of it tonight is just you saw a team that was not locked in mentally. They got punched in the mouth, and to their credit, they at halftime adjusted. They got locked in and they they finished it out and they took care of business. I mean, this could have been a game where we won by like three and we're like what the heck is going on and it looked that way about halfway through the second half yeah i would i would say that i i just don't really care about it mm-hmm. i mean i know that's a bad take but but i, I just mean in the bigger picture i feel like I, if they, I, big picture means nothing every you should be locked in every game ideally but you're never locked in every game yeah. right like in the big picture of, of the season in five days we're not going to even think about this yeah. anymore it's, it's hard just, to get up for this game it's just one, yeah. It's one of those games. It's 
keep in mind, Wisconsin just got ranked, right? Now they're back home after a really tough schedule. They're playing a four and four, whatever team at home. There's no juice. There's no energy. The crowd isn't into it. And they just started like, Meh, and that happens. Like, so I don't really care, to be honest. They, they won. They, they kicked in in afterburners. That's my kind of big takeaway is there's going to be games like this, and you have to find a way just to win in advance as a team. Well, and I think the the takeaway that I personally have is that they they got it together and they they turned it on and and put it away. Like they they realized that they needed to get locked in and they took care of business in the second half, and that was good to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, here here's my my I don't want to say worry. I've already talked about this, and this is something Rajiv and I have talked about before. I was a little more pessimistic on this. Rajiv was a little more optimistic. This team has no bench. Like they don't. It's not, it's not better than last year outside of no. a season. There is, they essentially no. go, but I mean, that, that is a pretty well, substantial no, difference. Not, but not for a real team. Like they essentially go six deep and Carter. Goes, I don't, yeah. I don't agree. You know, and Carter's and, Carter's solid defensively, but he's not uh, a guy that you can look to, to get you 10 points in a game. If you really need it. No, I it's, it's, it's a scary thin team. Right. And one injury we're, we're right back coming into this year. We had hoped honestly that Ilvers, uh, Kamari McGee, you know, a couple of these pieces, J- Jacoby needs has been hurt, but, you know, that we'd be able to go seven, eight, maybe even nine deep. Isaac Lindsay could get in there. And I think what we've seen and what we've learned is this is really a six man rotation with Carter Gilmore being kind of like the seventh man as a blue yeah. guy. And I think that is what it is. I think we're seeing more run from the backups than we saw last year, but it's not as much as we'd like. Like we'd like to see some of these guys get in 10 minutes and they're not, they're just not pushing for that. <laughs> And the, the staff doesn't trust. I'm telling, but even yeah. when they get out there, right? Like we've talked about Lindsay, he struggles with. Oh, he barely Carter. played tonight, but yeah. Um, we've talked about Carter Gilmore is kind of a disaster offensively. Quite frankly, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be super critical, but like Ilverix can't get on the court. Mario McGee hasn't been able to put the bu- back or the, the the basketball in the hoop at all. Even on his drives today, he's stopping in the paint, picking up his dribble and looking to kick it out instead of really trying yeah. to. Force issue at times get to the free throw and get into somebody um yeah I, I think I'm at the point where I'm just gonna say this this team's bench outside of yeah. Connor, who's great is not yeah. good yeah what did they say he's fourth in the big ten in freshman scoring mm. and I would say of the the top four he probably is the guy who's getting the least run or is relied on the least for scoring like let's don't get me wrong Connor could be averaging 15 a game like you could, mm-hmm. if you wanted him putting up 15 to 20 shots, he would easily be in that range. I mean, he's averaging tonight. He had 10 shots and he got us 13. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. Like he's, he's great off the bench. Uh, and, and uh, again, like I wanted to see more of Kamari McGee. I think there's more yeah. there, but this, it just may not be this year. Uh, yeah. He needs some confidence building. I, I would like to see them get him at least five minutes every game, just so he gets out there and he gets comfortable. Because I, I want to see what happens when he's not worried about making a mistake every time and thinks that he's not going to see the floor. Mm-hmm. And that's and like most I, of their bench. And like I said, I my overarching thought on this, and this is the first one I led with, is these games happen during a year, right? So mm-hmm. I'm not overly concerned about a slow start to Lehigh because they turned it on. Um, again, no, those happen, and in three, four days, nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to look back and say, that was a close game. Ah, is this team not for real? No, nobody cares. Like, we won. But I, you can still take, like, I think snippets from it. And I think one of the snippets I'm starting to really come to is the bench issues. But the other thing I'd say on the good side, um, this team shot really well today. And that is something that this team's capable of that I don't think last year's team could do. Yeah, th- the three-point shooting on this team. So here's the thing that I th- that I like about this year is that Connor is a guy who does not follow the normal trends of the team. And what I mean by that is he's pretty much the same no matter what. He's going to be out there shooting close to 50% from three, regardless of how the game's playing out. Whereas other guys, if two other guys are just completely missing, a lot of the times that can be contagious. And some of the other guys are a little more streaky in that regard. Um, Chucky's been better than Mm -hmm. what we've, what we've seen with him. So he's been more consistent, but of the three, I'd say Klesman, I think we have three plus shooters that are from three and that's Klesman, uh, Chucky and Asijian from outside. Klesman and needs I, to shoot more. He does. He he definitely. And I you you kind of commented on that when we were talking during the game that there's times when he pulls he puts it on the floor when he's wide open from three and it's like just put the shot up. 
You got a clean, open look. Shooter. Don't make the don't make this tougher than what it is. Number one, don't drag bodies into the paint. Like yeah. you, you, we want you hitting those shots because you open things up for the post. You t- you driving downhill is not going to do that. No, he does it too often. He'll catch it in it, with an open shot, either double clutch or drive into the paint. He's a forty percent mm-hmm. shooter from three. Mm-hmm. Like that's an incredibly efficient shot in modern basketball. Hit that shot. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you're here. But, you know, obviously for other reasons as well. But like you're a shooter, bro. Hit that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say this, uh, and then I want to kick it back to you if, if you have anything left or anything else you wanted to finish with on this. And then the third segment, for everyone in the comments, we're going to take a bunch of comments, just finish up there. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, my voice is kind of going in and out. We've had technical difficulties, but we're going to we're gonna march through it. Great guard drew up a great set right as halftime was closing up. And we've talked ad nauseum. And listen, I would be uh, definitely remiss if I didn't bring this up because we've been critical of end of game sets before half sets. You know, he drew up a great set with great our Chucky Epper coming off a ball screen, also running Connor off a, a screen on the baseline, curling him up, got an open look. The defense really focuses in on that that pick and roll with Chucky. And then, you know, you're able to really leverage Connor coming off that screen shot. They didn't go in, but it was a great look. I was mm-hmm. super excited about it. And that's really good offense. And mm-hmm. it's a great, great guard. Yeah. That's the beauty of of both Chucky and Asijian is that they, they can put the defense into some tight spots with things like that because Chucky's going to draw attention, but Connor is not a guy that you can just help off of. And because of that, you're going to give a lot of opportunities where Chucky's going to get an opportunity off a screen to come down a hill too, where he may have an opportunity to get a layup or something, or at least an easier look. Um, but yeah, we've we've been saying this all along. Um, it's it's one of those things that's really frustrated me, and it frustrates it frustrates me at every level. The NBA does a ton of it, and it's like just get the easy shot. Like you know that this guy has certain ones. It's the biggest thing that we look at the old scores, old school superstars compared to some of the guys now. Most of the guys will set, settle for a step back three in today's game, whereas when you look back twenty years ago, guys would try to either you know get to the paint and and put it up, or you know having things like Jordan with his fadeaway. I mean, that thing was 70% of the time it was going down. So you'd have a guy who would get his shot that he wanted. Well, a step back three is not a shot. That's a shot that the defense wants you taking. Yeah, I mean, there's at least dudes in the NBA that make that, though. Yeah. I mean, it is a little different at that level because the individual skill is so well, high. Well, normally those guys have the ability to still go by their man. So you 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 get yourself some separation off of that, whereas that's not necessarily the case for Hepburn. He gets it at times, but it's not consistent enough. Yeah, no, it's it is interesting to see. I'm going to be interested in seeing how that goes forward. Right? Is this something Greg Gard is going to do more of in those situations, or is he going to go back to really a little bit more of a stagnant look with Chucky coming off the pick and roll and trusting him to make those? I'm going to. It's going to be interesting. All right, coming yeah. up, we have to get into comments. We got a bunch of comments I want to get into. Wrap up some more stuff. Uh, really do appreciate everybody tuning in. First, today's show is brought to you by the National Highway Tra- our Transportation Safety Administration. And this is an important message, especially around the holidays when a lot of people are having get-togethers, parties. And this is something we've all been in these situations, right? You're hanging out with friends, putting back a few drinks, and a few becomes too many. And you think you can still drive home. The evening comes to a hand, and people head out, and you think, yeah, I should call for a ride. But nah, you're okay. Like, you can make it home. Not a big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even if you did, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? Your insurance goes up. Maybe you get a ticket. Maybe you lose your license for a bit. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe you lose your security clearance if you have one of those. Maybe you total your car. Maybe you kill somebody, right? It's not worth it. Everybody knows the dangers of driving drunk. The results can be tragic, deadly. However, that doesn't stop people from still doing it. So cops right now, police officers are out there looking for people, uh, impaired drivers on the roads. They're doing it to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after having several drinks, think again, play it safe, plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, I, I want to bring Justin back on. Again, I apologize for my voice, but I really do appreciate everybody <laughs> tuning in, uh, making this thing happen. And we're just going to go through comments now. I, I always want to devote enough time to that. Uh, hopefully we can get through them all today. Um, let's we'll start with Rajiv, and we already kind of talked about this. Rajiv's not on the show, but he said his positions need quarterback, defensive line, outside linebacker. I think we hit all those. Quarterback is an obvious one. Mm-hmm. Um, let's keep going down here. Mason Sansala, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce the name. He said, seemed like the team was just so flat early on. Glad they woke up, but took them a little too long to do so. 
I feel like we've talked about this as well. I, I just think these games happen. I wouldn't read too much into it. The one thing I will say about that that I think that I would I, I have concerns with is we, we saw how much energy Connor brings off the bench. And you start to look at it and go, well, what if I had that energy from somebody right when we start the game? Does that change? Like, is it more important for me to get off to a hot start? Or is it important to have kind of that saving grace where I have the guy there that if we're just not flat, I know will come in and provide a spark? I want Connor on the bench. I, I think him coming I agree for now. Amazing. But, yeah, like unless you're going to totally buy in and say he's our best scorer and say we're going to start playing you 30 plus and we're going to let you have 15 shots then i don't but see I don't a point of moving i know you're the i'll just say devil's out i don't think he's ready for that no i don't, I don't think, think he is either so no i i don't want him to be i think you'll play through more freshman mistakes mm-hmm. that. like i don't think you want him, him as a focal point quite yet i i really like him in the role he's in and he's basically getting quasi yeah. starterish level minutes anyway so mm-hmm. He's kind of playing that Manu Ginobili role that the Spurs had where he mm-hmm. never started. He's a Hall of Fame player. I'm not saying, listen, not saying Connor's that, but yeah. it's that kind of role. Come in, give us a spark. I, I think L- I'm very good with that role. Listen, I, and I think you agree with me on this is that by next year, it's going to be his team. Like he's going to be the scorer. Oh, I don't, you don't think be. it's Chuck's you don't? team. Oh, I think or, he's going to be the or, scorer. Let's I think that. he's. Let's table that because we had a bunch of comments. That could be a whole show. <laughs> okay. um, and I think it's also very interesting when we say, what's his team? Because from a leadership standpoint, from a running no, no, game, it's it's it, that's Chucky's, but I'm saying a from lot, a scorer, a primary scorer. Yeah. But let's get into a different show because I do want to get through these comments. That's because that could be a whole topic. <laughs> uh, Slim Lewis says, "Any guess on when we'll hear about Ebers' decision?" So I don't, but I will say this: I have heard that his family um, is is a very very calculated. They're going to really evaluate their decisions, um, and that there's not going to be any throwaway visits. So the fact that he came to Wisconsin. Put a lot of stock into that, but I don't have it. I'm not going to blow smoke. I don't have a timeline. I would guess it won't be super long, especially if he, if we only end up taking him or Armstrong mm-hmm. with Armstrong visiting this weekend. And I actually think he's on campus already, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that Evers is probably their number one target and there probably will be some, there, it potentially could be some, t- some pressure put on there. If they are only taking one guy where he'll come back and say, Hey, this guy wants to come. So if you're interested, we need an answer. And no. I think that's fair for a staff to do, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like, I do. I, I agree. <laughs> Both sides have to do what's best for them. Evers has the t- opportunity to say, hey, I'm not ready or, or I'm not quite sure. I want to take more visits. So if that's the case, then we have to deal with it. Agreed. Uh, Adam Otto, again, some of these we'll just roll through. He says you need a quarterback defensive line punter. Yeah. Agreed there. Jeffrey K. I want to know when Nolan Rucci will start getting first team reps. There's a lot of young talent there still. I mean, yeah. it hasn't all developed, but listen, Nelson's not going anywhere. He's going to be a starter. Then you have Malman. You have Trey Weddig, who I think is a better tackle than a guard, right? And I, I there's, I still like uh, Ben's too, the younger Ben's. Like, there's a lot of talent there. It's something to say regarding this. A lot will come into play with the the style that they want to play offense. So this offensive line is going to play different than the way we wanted them to play last year, and it's possible that guys' skill sets change with each you know style. Maybe Nolan will be better with this style. We'll find out. You know, we have a lot of big athletic bodies there. That's part of the problem. Jeffrey K comes back. Uh, also, Jordan Davis decided to shoot threes tonight. Yeah, I don't think we gave him enough props. He had four threes tonight. Yeah. Um, a really good offensive night. Also had a couple bu- buckets on the inside. Career night for him. His misses are still ugly. <laughs> um, but if you shoot over 50%, it doesn't matter. He, he's, he's, he's boom bust. Mm-hmm. Like the guy, just, he's either like, what? he's either head scratching or you're like, oh, man. That's incredible. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Alien Space, who, by the way, here's a low-key trivia question. Not even trivia question. Alien Space, I believe, was the first ever person to leave a YouTube comment on a Locked On Badgers YouTube show, on our second ever show. So a um, lot of respect for for you guy for sticking around with us and being here from the real jump. He says, guard gave them a good tongue lashing at half. Yeah, I think that pretty clearly message received. Um, oh, they said that he was scowling already right at the end of the half. He was not happy with the way things were being executed. Yep, message received. Uh, Badger Ryan, great name, by the way. Uh, 15 says, Isijin is a beast. Agreed. 100% agreed there. Uh, Tom Nisus, uh, someone who's, who's watched a lot of shows and uh, interacted with us a lot as well. Appreciate it, Tom. Cut the boys some slack. Overtime win over Iowa. Middle of the week, non-con game. Finals week. They won by 20. Move on. Uh, you are correct about the bench. 
yeah, I think that's I th- they have slack. I don't think we're being overly. I mean, listen, when we when we talk about these things, we're talking about them simply in the context of how the game looked. I'm not, it's not I'm not bash, bashing anyone. It's just I'm I evaluate these guys based off of what my expectations of them are in terms of who they've shown to be on the court prior. And that's yeah. kind of how I look at them. If a guy has a bad game, I look at it and be like, hey, I've seen you play better than this. You know, I I would like to see you achieve your your maximum level of capability. And I think some of these guys tonight, we, I just think we weren't locked in. I mean, I'm it's I don't begrudge them that. You know what happens when you're playing against a team that you don't take necessarily as seriously as you would, and that's it is what it is. Anyone who's played sports before knows if you play a team that you you think that you should blow off the court, you go out there and you maybe aren't necessarily at a hundred percent focused when you get out there. I think it was yeah. I think it was also the combination of the opponent plus who you had just gotten through, and yeah. now you're ranked. You're probably feeling yourself just a little bit. Yeah, you're in Madison. Yeah, I. I actually agree with Tom's take here completely. I, I don't think it's a big deal. They won one by 20. And like I said earlier, yeah. I don't think it matters. Mm-hmm. In three days, no one's going to even look yeah. at it. Well, in my opinion, I think just for the people who get hung up on efficiency numbers and stuff like that, I think them having 20 plus victory is a big deal because we didn't have a lot of those last year. Yep. Uh, Preston Broadser says, I feel like a start tonight against a quality opponent like Purdue, for example, will be in trouble. 100%. Like, yeah. if they don't if they don't bring it against a quality Big Ten opponent, if they start... We could be down 20 to 5. It's going to be yeah. ugly. But I don't think they're going to get a start like this against a Purdue because they're going to bring it. Um, Big Apple Bucky says, the team hasn't used a deep bench since Bo Ryan became coach. Neither he nor guard, neither he nor guard is in the habit of playing 10 guys. It's 7, 8, or 9 with foul trouble. That's it. I think my bigger point with the bench, uh, Big Apple, is no. There's not many teams that play ten, anyways. But but yeah. I'm not. I don't think we need ten, but I don't think there's more than one reliable scorer off the bench, yeah. and that's light. Is my bigger point. Yeah, um, that's that's a big deal. They need somebody who can provide a spark and potentially give you some cor- scoring plays if you need. I listen. I think in most situations, and this is even at the NBA level, no, teams normally go eight deep. Like that's your playoff, you know, rotation. You have a couple extra guys who you're comfortable with throwing five to 10 minutes a game that are really, you know, inconsequential, not, you know, minutes out there, but you typically want eight strong guys that if I have to go into a game, I feel comfortable with all these guys getting on the court. Mm, agreed. Uh, let's see. Randy Nordstrom says Crowley, CJ Davis won the game. Chucky and Wall tried too hard question mark and Gilmore helps despite Ryan's take. So let me start with this one. I don't know if the Chucky and Wall tried too hard question mark is for us or if you're asking. Um, the Gilmore helps despite Ryan's stake. Here's my thing. Like, I'm not trying to bash on Gilmore at all. He he's a good defensive player mm-hmm. positionally. He is he has able great to energy for rebounds. What I'm saying is offensively, he's very limited. And mm-hmm. you can see it when we're passing the ball around. He doesn't even look at the rim anymore, which defensively, that means his guy is now in the paint. It really hurts the spacing. He doesn't finish yeah. well at the rim, and now he's three and nine from the free throw. Line. And, and Wisconsin is a team that struggles with when you don't give them lanes to to yeah. Or in the post. I mean, I would just say offensively, he's he's not a good player. And the analytics and the stats would back that up. And that hurts the team overall. Now, he does a, he does things very well. I don't think he does enough things really well to – on a deeper team, I don't think he would play as much. I'm trying to say that as, as politely as I can because I, I really respect the heck out of the, the energy he plays. So with. so here's, here's something to take into context for this. Looking at the final four teams, you had Nigel Hayes coming in off the bench. That, that was your sixth man. Mm-hmm. And that's effectively like, I don't want to call Connor our sixth man because I think he's, a, he's playing starters minutes. So you either have Johnny Davis, or I mean, sorry, Jordan Davis or, or Gilmore, who you'd put effectively looking at as a Nigel Hayes type player. And there's a sizable gap between that. Mm-hmm. It's just, a, there's a talent gap. It just, there just is. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, but he does provide energy. Listen, the coaching staff trusts him. He's a bit of a connector. He's a solid passer. Um, let's keep going here. Alien Space, Yalden, Winter, Blackwell seems like a good class coming in. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really solid. All three are very good shooters. Um, I think we're getting some good, some good defensive ability, I'm mean, honestly, from all of them. Uh, Yalden's actually a solid defender for his size. He's not a great athlete, but I think he's a guy who's going to have a good, stout body in the post, which uh-huh. is something that will help. So we haven't had that in a while either. Like, I love Crowell to death, but he is not a guy who's exactly, you know, throwing his weight around down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim says we should go quarterback receiver. Um, maybe he means a number one receiver you can find one. I'd agree with that. 
uh, guard and defensive line. So really quick, Justin, because I don't want to, this show is starting to get a little long and I don't want to drag people along too long. Uh, but thoughts on, do we need a receiver in the transfer portal? Um, if you could find somebody really good, I say take the risk, but I would say we would be fine going into next season with what we have. I actually don't, I think that we're solid at receiver. Can we compete with Ohio state with what we have? No. Can we compete with probably everyone else in the big 10 with the guys we have? I would say, yeah, they can, they are capable of making plays. We'll find out just how much more the offense helps them coming into this next season. Um, the guard one is actually something that I actually find interesting because I agree with it. I think you do need some interior offensive linemen. And I think that that's an area where they've struggled that we're, when we look at the offensive line, not being great over the last several years, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that we haven't had great push through the middle of the line. And you're going to have some holes next year, right? Titman's mm-hmm. gone. Now Fernie coming back's a big deal. It is. Talked about just from a depth standpoint, you have Bordellini still. And then maybe Joe mm-hmm. Brunner. Um, yeah. We did get a comment from Alien Space about Joe Brunner. He, and I don't think we'd love him there either. Like, I don't want him at a guard. But someone's got to move to guard. Yeah. One of these tackles does, right? And maybe yeah. Brunner is that guy. Um, but, yeah, I could see guard. That's an interesting one, Tim. And thank you for bringing that up. I could see guard as a, a transfer portal target as well. Someone mm-hmm. to get uh, – Cincinnati had an all-conference center. By the way, he missed yeah. a lot of last year. But he could be a, an option to come in and maybe take over Tipman. Renfro. Yeah. So that's a possibility. Um all right, guys, I think we're going to wrap up there. Oh, Preston, let's nail a couple of these really quickly. Uh, he actually, the quarterback, backup quarterback from North Carolina, actually ended up committing to Arkansas. Yep, Jacoby. So Chris he went home. home. Yep. Uh, Alien Space against his Zach Showalter was another one that was pretty good off the bench. Yeah, another good energy mm-hmm. guy. Could play could play solid defense. Uh, and last comment here, S. Strong. We need a change of pace back for Allen. That's something Justin hit on as well. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I think getting – a little bit of a scat back would really help this offense in Phil Longo's system. Mm-hmm. Justin, man, uh, appreciate it. I think I got through 90% of the comments this time, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, so thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Justin, for tuning in. Badgers win. Um, a bunch of transfer portal news is still coming up, I think. I think we're going to – We had four of- commits already this week. I would be not shocked if we end up with a couple more by the end of the weekend. So just and that's strong, and we appreciate you. Thank you for the kind words. On Wisconsin, we're going to talk to you again tomorrow. Um, good win for the Badgers. Now let's put us put it behind us and move on.